Hello, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Amrita Balachandra. This is your news of the day in 10 minutes of everything that's going on in not just India, but across the world. And that's why it's called Just the News, because there's no opinion. So let's get started. The first piece of information that you need to know is that leaders of the Quad Alliance, India, US, Japan and Australia met on Friday and have pledged to promote, and I'm quoting, a free, open, rules-based order rooted in international law to advance security and prosperity and counter threats to both uh, in the India, Indo-Pacific and beyond. Now, the four Quad countries also agreed to commit to manufacturing one billion doses uh, of vaccine by 2022 for distribution in Asia. Now, the four leaders um, agreed that they will meet for an in-person summit uh, by the end of the year. And this could uh, take place, according to reports, on the sidelines of a multilateral summit like the G, uh, G7 in the UK in June or the G20 in Italy in October. On to an update now from the Mansuk Hirain case. Assistant Police Inspector Sachin Vase, uh, who is on the radar of the NIA in the Mansuk Hirain case, uh, was denied interim protection by a sessions court in Thane, uh, stating that there was evidence against the cops' involvement in the case. Now, the next hearing for the case uh, is on the 19th of March, we understand. Uh, to give you some context, now, Mansuk Hirain uh, was an auto parts dealer whose SUV was found with explosives outside Mukesh Ambani's house. He uh, was found dead in a creek uh, on the 5th of March in Thane. According to a report by Mumbai Mirror, and this is fresh development that's come in, Vazi posted an ominous WhatsApp status on Saturday. And this is what the status said. The status read 3rd March 2004, and I'm quoting uh, the status that uh, Vazi put up. Fellow officers from the CID arrested me in a false case. This uh, status also goes on to say that arrest inclusive uh, was inclu inconclusive. I beg your pardon, till date. Sensing the history is going to repeat, my fellow officers are on to falsely trap me. Uh, there's a slight difference in the scenario. Then probably I had 17 years of hope, patience, life and service too. Now I will have neither 17 years of further life, nor service, nor patience to live. I think the time to say goodbye to the world is coming closer, unquote. Also in the news, on to some COVID uh, news now. 88% new COVID-19 cases is from seven states. That's what the health ministry has said. And these are the states that we're talking about. Maharashtra, Kerala, Punjab, Karnataka, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu and Madhya Pradesh have accounted for nearly 88% of uh, new cases that have been reported uh, in India on Saturday. Maharashtra, of course, counting, uh, uh, recording the highest number of cases with 15,817 cases. India on Saturday has, in the meantime, reported 24,882 cases, its highest single day rise uh, this year. And that should cause a little worry for all of us. Also in the news, in a recent meeting, uh, Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Chauhan has said, Tough measures, and I'm quoting him, tough measures will be taken to flatten the curve. Night curfew might be clamped uh, in Bhopal and Indore from Sunday or Monday, unquote. Uh, he also further discussed ways to reduce people uh, traveling from Maharashtra and said that they should be thermally scanned. And this, of course, comes after Maharashtra witnessed that spike in COVID cases that I just told you about. Indore and Bhopal, in the meantime, have uh, so far reported 940 and 621 deaths, respectively. Telangana, in the meantime, is on high alert as COVID cases have spiked there as well. Telangana's 11 districts are, are on high alert, out of which eight are near the borders of Maharashtra and Karnataka. This comes after there have been growing cases, uh, not just in Maharashtra, but also Karnataka. Health Minister has now ordered all the 33 district medical and health officers to increase testing. Apart from activating the tracking and uh, uh, tracing mechanism to detect COVID-19 cases. On to some news on farmers' protests now. In a bit to tackle the summer, we understand farmers who are protesting against the farm laws have now started constructing homes near the borders, and this is according to multiple reports who've reported this. At Tikri border near Haryana, protesters are spending uh, on construction materials minus the labor, which is why that cost has also come down to about 
20 to 25,000 rupees, despite having nearly 10 round of talks. Remember, so far, uh, the meet between farmers and the government has been inconclusive, meaning there has been no breakthrough so far. On to some news from the state of West Bengal now. The Election Commission of India has found the West Bengal uh, government's report on the alleged attack on Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee in Nandigram they've said was, I'm quoting them, quite sketchy and did not have any details on how the incident happened. Now, this is according to PTI, where an official has said, and I'm quoting, the report submitted by the West Bengal government appear to be quite sketchy and without any details of the incident, like how it happened or who could be behind it. We have asked the state administration to furnish more details, unquote. The state government's report submitted to the ECI on Friday evening referred to the presence of a huge crowd uh, at the spot, but has no mention of the four to five people uh, who Banerjee alleged had attacked her. Now, it further said that there was no clear video footage of the attack as well. Let's now take a look at what's making news in the world of business. Tata Sons Private Limited has now agreed to acquire control of India's largest online grocery, Big Basket, according to a filing with the Com Competition Commission of India on Friday, in a deal valued more than $1 billion. Now, according to report in Mint, Tata uh, Sons Digital Services subsidiary, Tata Digital Limited, will acquire 64.3% stake in big basket also according to bloomberg the government will exit its entire 26.12 percent shareholding in tata communications this is what reports have said that the government will sell a 16.12 percent stake through an offer for sale via stock exchanges and the remaining shares will be sold to tata sun private investment arm uh, immediately after that sale on to international news now, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella said he is appalled by acts of hate against Asian Americans and the Asian uh, community globally. And this is what he said in a statement. I'm quoting him. I'm appalled by the ongoing acts of hate against Asian Americans and the Asian community globally. Racism, hate and violence have no place in our society. I'm united with the Asian and Asian American community in standing against this injustice, unquote. According to Asian American advocacy groups, over 3,000 cases of abuse against Asian Americans have been reported between March and December 2020 alone. And in terms of COVID, Italy has, is now heading back into a lockdown to contain third wave of COVID. Italy uh, is doing so on from the... 15th of March, a year after it first shut down uh, to contain the third wave of the pandemic, like I just told you, most schools, stores and restaurants, according to reports, will close as more contagious strains uh, have increased infections to the highest level since November. Now, the prime minister uh, has said, uh, and I'm quoting him, measures are ne necessary to avoid a deterioration that would make even more stringent measures inevitable. Uncourt. As far as Brazil is concerned, Brazil reported 85,663 COVID-19 cases on Friday, pushing it thereby its total to over one crore cases, with the country now surpassing India uh, for the second highest cases in the world. So it's the second highest in the world. Brazil also reported 2,216 deaths and bringing the whole total uh, to 2,75,105. Now, Thailand, in the meantime, on Friday, has suspended AstraZeneca's COVID vaccine over blood clot fears, uh, according to reports. And despite a range of authorities saying around the world that uh, it is, in fact, safe, the move now follows Denmark, Norway and Iceland suspending it after reports of inoculated people developing blood clots. In the meantime, the World Health Organization has said on Friday that it's reviewing recent reports of blood clots in some people who received this particular vaccine. On to news from the world of sports now. England defeated India by eight wickets in the first T20 in Ahmedabad. Now, the victory is England's 
fourth consecutive in T20 cricket, while India have now lost two to uh, T20s in a row. England have edged past India 8-7 in their head-to-head -head T20 record. Now, at the end of the bulletin, we give you some bit of positive news. So now, positive news now. This is the information that's coming in from the city of Mumbai. Mumbai civic body BMC has said that it is planning to involve community health workers to raise awareness and counsel slum dwellers and bring people in groups to vaccination centers. Uh, now, the BMC's uh, immunization officer has said that the registration will be done on the spot and transportation to and from uh, the vaccination center will be free of cost. This comes after vaccination centers have reported very few people from the slums. In total, according to reports, over 2.3, uh, I beg your pardon, 2.13 lakh people in Mumbai have been vaccinated so far. That's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good evening.